Hello guys, I'm back from vacation, back to this channel, to Laravel Daily. It's so good to be back re-energized as much as it was possible with two small children. So in a way I'm more tired, but I missed YouTube, I missed the videos. And for starters, the first video after the break, let's review some code. And also back from the vacation, I think I will be doing code reviews again more often. Reviews of your code or the code from Laravel Daily Com code examples, which we have a lot of code examples from open source, so I'll link that in the description below. So if you have something for me to review in a quick five to 10 minute video, email me povilas at laraveldaily.com and let's discuss. So I received this email. Person is asking to help them cleaning up the code. And they sent two files, purchase controller and purchase model. That's it. I don't have the full project. I don't have any more context. So in this video, we will review these two files. So I've opened them in Sublime, not even PHP Storm. And I will just tell my opinion what to improve. But before we do that, I want to announce one thing that while I was on vacation, my team was really on fire with new features on Laravel Daily. So we launched a new feature, a new pricing page with a new plan. So from time to time, people were asking me how to purchase lifetime membership for Laravel Daily instead of having monthly or yearly subscriptions, more invoices and stuff like that. If people want to invest into long-term career with me, as a helper, as a mentor, finally we achieved this. Lifetime membership you can purchase for $3.99 and you won't receive any more invoices or any more charges ever again for Laravel Daily Com. And this week for the launch of this, I will give you some discount. So 30% off lifetime membership with coupon code LIFETIME30 if you purchase this week until May 28th. So yeah, that quick announcement. Now let's go to the topic of today's video. So let's start the review from the model. To be honest, I haven't even looked at that deeply. So it will be almost like a live review. What do I see immediately? And immediately for you to understand, the goal of clean code is to be clean for others reading that. So imagine me as a new developer on your team and I'm looking at that model, trying to find something to fix something. Is it readable? Is it easy to change? Is it easy to understand different parts? So this is the context. Okay, I see they use a package auditable, which is cool. And these are the events for audit. You can Google that package, it's pretty good actually. Pretty sure I have a video about it some long time ago, you can Google it out. Then casting purchase expense as JSON. Okay, so this field is JSON, fine. And then immediately I see function sync everything. What is everything? Again, clean code means readable code and understandable code. And immediately I have the first WTF. So I have two questions here. What is sync everything? And later we will get deeper here. And then let's scroll down. I think it's a big function. Okay, that's another topic. And then we have, yeah, relationships. So what I would do in any eloquent model, first define the relationships and only then custom functionality. So first and foremost, eloquent model is kind of like configuration for your database table with relationships, observers, maybe accessors and mutators. And if you have extra functionality on top of that, it should go below, not on top like this. So that's what I would change. And actually before reviewing that big function, let's review the relationships because I guess it will be more applicable for every one of you who use relationships. What can I see here that could be improved? First, for consistency, method names should be lowercase, not uppercase. Then also naming. I think it's inconsistent. So purchase, the model belongs to a user, but the class name is admin and the field name is created by. So three different naming for the same thing. Admin class, okay, fine. Although I have a separate video why users and admins should not be separated. I will link that in the description below. But anyway, it should be either admin, for example, so this should be clearer, or created by, for example, also created by user ID would be more clear. I'm not sure what would be the better solution in this project because again, I don't have all the project, so don't have a lot of context, but just in general, I see that as kind of a red flag, not necessarily, but it may cause confusions to other developers. Then purchase, so I see a relationship to self, but the problem I see here is it's related by invoice number. And if invoice number is a string, like prefix ABC123 or something, 
then this could be pretty slow operation. Instead of having a relationship by invoice number, I would probably have some kind of purchase ID or parent ID field belong to self. Or actually, wait a minute. I've made an incorrect comment, but I will intentionally not edit out because that's an example of confused developer. So I've read the purchase. The model is called purchase and I thought it is relationship to self, but actually it is relationship to another model called partials. And by the way, model should be singular, so it should be probably partial. But then again, the question, why is the function called purchase if this is partial. So it should be partial, probably something like this. And then if possible, maybe in this case, it's not possible, I will suggest to go partial ID, something like that. So foreign key with integer, it would be more performant and also would ensure the data correctness. With invoice number, nothing is actually restricting from partials to belong to other invoices and data being lost. And by the way, did you know that in the relationship you can add where condition? So that's a good example. And then those two. Also a small thing called styling one line empty per method. But actually I see that repeating all over. So space here, no space here, but space here, for example. So this is really not exactly hard to read, but let's put it this way, inconvenient to read. Or space here, for example. So I will not repeat things about code styling. You should use something like Laravel Pint or CS Code Fixer for that. I have a separate set of tutorials about that and I will link that in the description below as well. So those two things, those final relationships, has many purchase detail, this is cool. Although actually in this case, if it's purchase ID by default, it could be omitted because it's the default naming convention. And similarly here belongs to supplier, supplier ID is the default naming convention. So yeah, this is how much I can tell about relationship only. So I guess this video will be a bit longer than usual quite a good way to come back from vacation with more interesting and more powerful, so to speak, video. Now let's get to sync everything. First thing I would say that this method does not belong to eloquent model. Sync something is an action that should go ideally elsewhere. I also have a few recent videos like a series about how to refactor a method from model into service. And I'll link that series in the description below as well. So I would move that from eloquent model into service of sync something. So what is that everything? Let's try to understand. This is the purchase. So I guess that purchase should be synced with purchase details in other database tables. This is a red flag. According to separation of concerns, model should not know anything about the request because model methods or service methods, if I'm suggesting, could be called not only from request like from controller, but from automated tests, from jobs, from artisan tinker, or whatever is the source which would not have this request. So if you have some parameters from request, you need to pass them here as a parameter to that method. Okay, move on calculating the price, then calculating the discount, then modifying the purchase with some calculations. Again, request here, I don't approve that personally. And then some logic that if purchase expense total is bigger than zero, then calculating something like total expense one rate and total price, then another query for purchase expense update or created, then calculating purchase amount current with some helper amount single USD, I guess it's a global helper. Okay, so now I start to understand that sync everything. So safe is the model that we will actually modify. So we're trying to find the safe by some condition. And if we get that, again, we recalculate something and save the amount. Okay, so then it's an if purchase expense total bigger than zero. Else, I guess it's a pretty similar operation. So again, get transaction and save here first, and then a different logic for some kind of virtual ID, new virtual ID, and saving the data or deleting the transaction, and then saving the purchase after all those operations. Okay, I'm not sure if you're following my thoughts, I'm just kind of reading it aloud, but see how much time it requires for me to even understand what that method is about. 
it's too long for one method. There's no strict rule about how long the method should be. There's no like 20 lines or 50 lines of code, but I'm pretty sure this should be divided into separate sub methods. And that's why another reason should be outside of model into some kind of purchase service or transaction safe service because this is the object in action. I'm not exactly sure, but probably these two could be refactored with repeating things. I guess it's a too big topic for this video, for this short video. And also I don't have enough context of that project to perform such refactoring. But my advice is this is too long method for others to understand in the future. Okay, so that was the model. I think that's it for the model. Now let's move to controller. I will try to make it a bit faster because the video is already quite long. Or maybe you prefer such longer videos, then shoot in the comments below. Maybe I will do more of those. Of course, it takes more time to me Then maybe the channel will not be necessarily daily, but maybe it's more useful for others. So in the controller, we have index. And in here, the author uses data table with Ajax request. It's a good old package of Yaira data tables. So anyway, index does not load the data yet. It just checks the permissions, which is a good thing, this authorize. And then the data is the method to load the actual data for data table. So we'll load the brands and show the data table with various columns. Again, I see a helper for amount single design. I don't see that helpers here because they didn't send that to me for buttons. Also permissions here, pretty well done. That code doesn't look pretty. The HTML should not be built in the controller, but this is how that package of data table works. Okay, then next method is create. For create form, I guess we need inventories. I'm not sure why date is needed because you can call carbon format from blade as well. And also carbon is not needed here. Laravel has now as a helper. Also my personal preference is to have one space before return. I don't remember if it's according to PSR or is it just my personal preference. Over the years, sometimes I forget what is the actual rule, what is the recommendation, what is I've seen others doing that. I often just share my opinion or my way of doing things. This is with scopes, it seems. So looks great, active, check and then get. Cool, then invoice invoice for the purchase. This is just the view of invoice. Okay, I guess if we stick to CRUD controllers to resource controllers, this should be show instead of invoice, but maybe it's more readable for others that it is actually invoice. I don't have the blade view here. Now store, we have database transaction here, which is a good thing. And in such financial applications, I do advise to use transactions because it seems to be pretty complex calculation here for saving the data. So we get the input from request. I guess there's some kind of validation here in the form request class. And then we try to form the purchase. I probably would not use that. I would do just request validated from the form request for most of the columns. And for some non-standard columns that do not come from the request, I would just add them later. Then created by, I probably would fill that in with observer or mutator in Eloquent. Created ad should not be filled because it's automatic unless in the model it is disabled, but I don't think it's disabled, so we don't need this at all. Then we try to save, and then for each of product ID, we save purchase detail. That's why we need the transaction. This is a great decision. And again, I probably would not do it line by line, but rather form the request accordingly. Maybe it's not that easy to do and maybe this is readable enough, but I would try to refactor that to make that method a bit shorter. Again, created at and created by. Next, product find, update product. So purchase, then purchase detail, then we have product. So we need to update the products with cost and price. Again, for consistency, model should be singular, not plural. And then also we have new product inventory. So yeah, a lot of things are happening. And then also here, finally, we call sync everything. So we're saving that into safe or whatever it's called. I don't remember exactly and also supplier transaction money, and then we return the purchase. Return purchase is the result of the transaction, and we can use that result in the controller. So if we do have the result, we return success with ID of that result, otherwise fail with 500. So yeah, overall quite a long method and I would try to shorten or create sub methods for different parts of those operations. And speaking of sub methods, here's one of them, update product inventory pollen. This is called in the controller here above. 
So why not create more methods for different operations? It would be much more readable. Okay, next we have show, which is not filled. Instead, we have invoice for purchase controller. And another question then, this is show for brand. And in the index method, we have brands, but the model name is purchase. Again, naming things. Is it a brand? Is it a purchase? And then if it is the purchase by a brand, maybe show would be a better name after all, because they do have show method. It's just not filled in with any code. Anyway, edit purchase. This is similar to the create with just more data needed for the form, but the form is called update, update blade. Again, for consistency, I would have called it purchase edit form because I'm trying to make it consistent between route names, controller method names, and blade file names. Then it's much easier to find things. Update, request validate. For some reason, this time it's in controller, not in form request separately. Again, inconsistent, but maybe it makes sense. And then similar things with database transaction. I guess only some of those things can be modified. And then again, long code of assigning the fields. So I guess I would try to also refactor these parts into some kind of methods which would be used in both store and update. Pretty sure it's not possible to do it like one by one because it's not identical, but many of those things could be shortened. So yeah, that's the update. Similarly, if the result is this or that, again, pretty terrible formatting of the code, code styling. So space here, space here, space here, hard to read, but still possible to read. And then destroy. Again, good that it is in transaction, good that it is checked with permissions, and then a lot of operations of checking something and deleting stuff. And if it is successful, we return status true. But what if it's not successful? Is there some kind of fallback here? I don't think so. So I think in destroy, it lacks this part. Else, return fail. And then also there's product CB. I'm not sure what that is. View template part, also not sure what that is. Is it a Laravel global helper? I don't remember that. Actually, let's try to find it. It's not in the controller. So I guess it's some kind of separate route to view product by request. I cannot really comment more here. So yeah, this is the review of just two files. Took longer than I expected, but I hope it is helpful. Overall, my overall message would be consistency, consistency, consistency. The question from the email was about clean code and clean means readable in the first place. And for me, in many places, I had questions what this means or I had to scroll for quite a lot to get from one part to another. And also I haven't even started on analyzing these parts, what is pollen, what is purchase expense and stuff like that. And I don't even mention typos. So product inventory probably. But look how it is written with spelling errors. They seem like a small thing, but again, if you want the team of developers to work on the project or yourself in the future, for the team to understand the code, it needs to be readable, separated into separate methods instead of having how many lines? 500 lines of code in the controller. That's definitely too much. What do you think? Anything you would add? Anything I've missed? Anything you disagree with? Let's discuss in the comments as usual. And from tomorrow, we're back to Laravel Daily as daily channel. Also reminding that if you want to support my mission and go on a long-term journey with improving your coding skills, lifetime membership this week is 30% off with coupon code LIFETIME30. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.